New on Curiosity Stream, how do you connect a 16th century potato to limitless energy production? Could Napoleon's toothpick have a direct link to a machine that predicts the future? And how can a 1700s conch shell chart a course to humans connecting their brains to the internet? James Burke's visionary series, Connections, returns for a new generation. Experience all new Connections. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. The following series is outlandish, unapologetic, and uncut. Listener discretion is advised, but not enforced. We're going to have a good time. Totally. I, I'm comfortable, and I, you, you crack me up, so I don't think I'm going to have any problem having a good time. Oh, of course. <laughs> and that goes for you too, Brother Will. You practically family too. Yeah, he's he's in there. He's listening. <laughs> Just making sure of it. You know, you don't talk much, sir. <laughs> he'll pop he'll pop in when you least expect it. Oh, I can course. guarantee you that. And I tell him I'm an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> See, there it was. <laughs> Good to hear you, yep. sir. Good to hear you. I mean, but I saw you show up right there on your Unplugged video. We'll talk about that, too. Uh, that was really well done, by the way. Congratulations on that. That, that was nice. Oh, thank you. Mm, I, I just love when artists are always experimenting, especially when they start doing Unplugged and acoustic versions of their song. Like, some people actually do, like, uh, medieval renderings of their songs. And I'm like, wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah, people are really creative. It's mm-hmm. definitely... And it's not like doing an acoustic set or unplugged as a new idea or anything, but it just felt like a way for us to get out there and do something different because obviously haven't heard our music like that before. So, Hey, that's expanding it. I mean, I, I can't wait to see like the medieval cut of, um, f- you know, City of Flies or Sinking So Fast. That would be <laughs> lit. <laughs> Shoot. Well, there might there might be some something or other or something coming by someone that you may know possibly. Oh, what? What do you do this time? <laughs> I don't know. I, I that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I've said too much already. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just playing around. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> I know it's you. <laughs> yep. Like. Oh, that's hilarious. I do that with all you guys nowadays. I'm like, oh, okay, neon sweatsuit somewhere, uh, blast pass. Uh, mm. <laughs> You're like, I'm watching you. I yep. know what you're up to. Where's the XSP at these days? You know what I mean? Things like that. Shoot, she's just as crazy as y'all, man, especially some of the stuff she does. And then, of course, Star Madman, which I always mess with Star every episode. <laughs> yes, of course, her too. Okay, let's hang out then. Okay, fine. We'll team up. I'm J-Man, and this is J360 Hangout, here on J360 Radio! Hey, what's going on, J360 Legion? How are you all doing tonight? Yes, this is J-Man, back from the grave. I was never dead. And while we're on the subject, I'll be hanging out tonight with the ones, the only, the great, great, great pioneers of Rivet Wave. Resin Sun. Woo! <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. Cass, Will, you're up, and it's good to have you here on Day 360 Radio. So how's it going, my people? It's fantastic, and thank you so much for having us. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And and how are you, Brother Will? Are you, you, you good? Anytime, man. I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm sorry. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> doing pretty good pal i just had to go ahead and mess with you there for a moment yeah it's just awesome to have you guys here i'm really blown away this is exciting this especially. is really exciting <laughs> yes I mean, william popping in and out yes yes <laughs> I- i'm loving it though you you guys have a unique sound a unique style and an aesthetic because you not only do music you also do art and you also do um god what don't you guys do i mean you did an unplug concert too i was like yeah, could you let the J360 <laughs> Legion know like um, what cool stuff you guys do? What is the essence of Resin Sun? So, yeah, I'll go ahead and answer. Rivet Wave, we came up with that term just because back in like the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, um, industrial music lovers, they would be called rivet heads. 
And so we thought it would be cool because we really like to add that industrial element to our music um, mixed with like the dark wave. Um, we thought it'd be cool to mix it together. Nice, nice. See, I used to love a lot of industrial rock and um, industrial electronica growing up too. So that's why your sound just really works with me, you know? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a big inspiration. When you can't find a home, you know what I mean? It's like synth wave is kind of blowing up right now. And, you know, there's metal and all this other, you know, other genres, you know, but there's nothing that we really fit into. So we were like, well, we could just need to make a home for ourselves here, kind of. So, I mean, it's a lame attempt, but it's the best we could do. <laughs> hey, that attempt is amazing, and I'm all here for it. And not only that, people of the J360 Legion actually love what you guys are doing. So, yes, you are making a home, and this is actually coming together very well. I love it. Hell yeah. We love our home with the J fam. Mm-hmm. Jam fam forever. And uh, let me just tell you all this. Jamiversary was a grand slam. We did it up. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of work on your behalf. So good job. Talk to you. Hey, hey, it wasn't a solo victory. It was team win. Y'all were in it. <laughs> we were just riding oh, that yeah. wave. <laughs> yeah, oh, there was a lot man. of good music played. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. All we needed was some tie-dye shirts, which I should have talked to y'all about. But you know what? There's always next year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I could do tie-dye, but I could definitely do something cool. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Most definitely. You It'll know. be psychedelic for sure. Yes. Yes. See? see? Yes. <laughs> I, th- this right here, this is actually a, a match just waiting to happen because I love psychedelic wave from, like, Hendrix and all. Oh. Oh, yeah, the show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what inspired you guys to uh, also make, um, you know, your kind of sound? Like, what really got you started with your riffs and all? Like, you know, were you just jamming one night and just figured that would work? or? Uh, well, for me, I guess, as far as, like, guitar goes, I grew up kind of in my teens is when I kind of got into playing guitar, and I was mostly playing, like, Jimmy Page kind of stuff is what I really liked to- the time and then also like red hot chili peppers and rage against the machine and and those there's kind of like the similarity between those three guitar players too i guess they're they're like they the riffs sound great but if you look like at the actual like tab behind them or how they're actually played is like pretty simple stuff it's just kind of slippery and like just counterintuitive i guess to play it so i i kind of got into that and that kind of kind of just mindset just kind of flowed through the whole 90s it seemed like and i just love that sound where it's not necessarily you know i think that's the best music overall it's just the simple music but you can make it sound a lot more as long as it captures a feeling or sounds cool i guess it's it's not you know it's not the olympics you're not trying to break any records or anything here all right right (laughs) and that's really cool because you know y'all could qualify for real i'm just saying (laughs) I mean, you guys are like, you nah, guys we're have a knockout punch with your music. That stuff is awesome. And like our music, like we're not even like we have no idea what we're doing. You know what I mean? We're just two people that really love music, and we know what we think sounds cool, and we just keep fucking with it until it sounds like what we think sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just like so persistent that we just keep messing with it until it it gets where we we think it sounds alright, but we have you know literally no idea what we're doing. Like I took a music theory class in college one time, and some chorus here and there, but otherwise it was just me. I read some, you know, guitar magazines and then just grind it out on some, you know, digital software over the years and, you know, just kind of self-taught. I think Sandra too, like, mostly just self-taught. Oh, yeah. I think that, that that's the difference. Like, a lot of musicians, you know, you could be a great trained musician, but, you know, and, you know, maybe a great teacher or something. But if you're really, like, trying to capture, like, an emotion or capture an energy like we're trying to do, like we're not really trying to do something overly technical here. We're just trying to grab on, like stick our hook into an emotion and just kind of ride that hook and like maybe steer it towards some other people at the same time. Very nice. 
<laughs> I'm all for that, though, man. That is a wonderful, wonderful way of going about it. Like, you know, hey, great great artists start out that way, you know? All the time. And then all of a sudden, the legion of fans come in. And then you ride the wave, and then you get part of an elite group like us. Now, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, think that's just, I think that's the main thing. It's just like just sticking with it, you know, with anything is like your side hustle or whatever it is, double mm-hmm. life, as we like to call it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just have being persistent about it and sticking with like, we've been fucking around with this for such a long time, but yeah. it, you know, we are really dormant like the past eight years with it and then really got it going again this past September when we put out yes. the LP, <laughs> celebrities want to kill you. Yeah, which is actually kind of more a collection, you know, of shit we were working on during that, that eight year period. Yeah, and, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's just like, you know, just had too much life in the way, but now it's like we're finally at this point in our life where it's like we have some a couple hours a day <laughs> that we can kinda of carve away for music and art and just do what we fucking you know, the real shit the shit we should be focusing on all the time but can't. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. I believe me, I totally do. But uh, I'm like, sure. Like, yeah, sure you, you you probably feel the same way. Like fuck, like you're getting torn between life and you know. I'm not, I I don't want to say like dreams to like be over dramatic, but it's like what you're you know what makes you happy or what you enjoy doing, mm-hmm. and you know shit that maybe you don't enjoy doing, but you can make money at, and so yeah, it's a constant struggle and. Yep. Especially with me, like, first getting into business, you know, it's like you're like, oh, you know, I need to, you know, be this business person or whatever and and not be this other person so much. But then you're like, fuck that. After a, a couple of years, you're like, get tired of that, put on that shit, you know, and it's like, fuck it. I'm not like a wolf in sheep's clothing anymore. I'm just a wolf, you know what I mean? Just, I'm just out there now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? You pretty much called oh, yeah. me out on that one. That's that's how like uh, I was with J three sixty Productions in the beginning. <laughs> it's like, nah, I'm here, damn it. This is what we gonna do. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, how you man. have to be to succeed. Yeah, you guys totally called it on that. See, but like I say, much like me though, don't stop. You guys got it. Keep going, please, for the sake of all that is great around here and legendary. Keep going. <laughs> Oh yeah, thank you, Jay. <laughs> if, I, if I get to that point where I start doing like concert videos, and I know I will, y'all on it. Nice. There's got to be at least oh. one damn J360 Jams movie. That's all I'm saying. And the plot oh, has always shit. been in my head all the time, you know. So yeah, even on sabbatical, <laughs> I can't go away from it. It's it's there, you know. It's like yeah. Yeah, I bet you would have a really good soundtrack for your oh, movie yeah. too. Hey, I ain't the only one in it. Y'all in it. <laughs> That's it. Like, you know, <laughs> I am not the only one in that. Uh, we're going to get at least like most of the jam fam in that thing. Because you got to figure for every principal act you put in, how long is the damn movie going to be? Uh, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of celebrities want to kill you, you know, that ain't too far from the truth. Um, <clears throat> I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No doubt. Some of that wild stuff, man. Just saying. <laughs> That kind of came about like I don't know. That was that like I was saying that like these songs have been around for a long time. But there's like a photo that got leaked out. I don't know if you remember, but it was like Lindsay Lohan. Mm-hmm. And she was at some like party, and everybody's of course doing coke, and they're like doing coke off of like a knife. And there's like a, a picture of her like licking a knife or something like that, and it just looked so like you know evil and just like these fucking people. You know they. I don't know. It, it just like taps into a nerve a little bit, and that was kind of the what kind of got us on that path of you know celebrities want to kill you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 kind of true. Is it the one with the donkey in the back? I'm just messing because there might be one with the donkey in the back. You never know anymore. They be doing some wild stuff to animals. Oh my god. <laughs> and then not to mention like when we saw Lindsay Lohan she was healthy at one time then we saw her in the other picture where she was anorexic and scary and then like yeah but she was also hanging out with Lionel Richie's kid so there, there's no happy ending in this story might as well get to the music though <laughs> well it was definitely just to say about that at that same time we were you know and we still do think this as well but without like going too deep into it but like celebrities do have some kind of weird like influence on people 
and Mm -hmm. some kind of like mind controlling kind of thing. So that's a little bit like more if you wanted a deeper message of that song. Pretend like they have they're on the high horse and that they always have this moral high ground and you know they have the right to tell everybody what to do just because you know they're a great artist or great at a specific thing that they do. It's like that doesn't mean you're you know my boss necessarily. You don't get right. to tell us what to do just because you're famous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean especially like when they ask us to donate money, whereas they make a quarter of a mil every damn picture. How about you donate your money? Things like that. Yeah, they're like definitely the most hypocritical people out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to make sure like as uh, our celebrity status grow, uh, I'm going to make sure I, I stay true to myself, all right? Stay, you know what I mean? Stay humble. Stay humble. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to try to tell anybody what to do with their life, that's for damn sure. Oh, you know it, man. Yeah. Shoot, you got it. Of course, on the J-Man show, I'm pretty damn close, but then again, I'm already fighting stupid people on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Some of that stuff that come from the public is wild, bro. That's all there is to it. However, though, the first track of the night is going to be City of Flies. Now, I really love this one. I listen to this one all the time. And, like, this is, like, one of my top favorites from you guys. Hell yeah. And I think this is actually one of your first from your debut. By the way, your debut was amazing. I, I took the time to listen to some old jams episodes. Yeah. I was like, yep. This is when I first met Cass and Will. Two good people. Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> That was fun. I wanted to say about the first jams. It was so cool, like, being in the chat room because it reminded me of when I was, <laughs> like, in junior high or, like, <laughs> high school and just, like, typing away in the chat rooms with everybody and connecting on that level and talking about the music. It was a really cool experience. So I really enjoyed that. <laughs> nice. Very Nice. I, I, I just hope that each time that we do these voyages, because they're not really episodes anymore, they're voyages. Each time we do these things, you guys get like a, a really good experience, you know, something like a great memory to really live with, you know, because it's going to follow you, you know, which is like, yeah, uh, sure. especially when we made it during the time of a crazy pandemic. So I'm just hoping that everybody's that life was a lot easier when we made it, you know. Well, music always heals, so. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. So your first track of the night, ladies and gentlemen, is City of Lies. Um, City of Flies. Why do I keep saying City of Lies? Anyway, here we go. Not- <laughs> anyway, your first track of the night is called City of Flies by Resin Sun. Take it away, y'all. <laughs> There's a pain that lives in your eyes The 
City of Flies from Resin Sun. Awesome, right? That vibe just takes you right in. You know something, though? Let's go on ahead and keep talking with them because here is Resin Sun again in the room with me. So, what's up, y'all? They love your music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was also telling them about a top secret uh, plan, but you guys ain't going to hear about that yet until much, much later, but. They're definitely in it. I had to make sure I go ahead and make these connections while I'm here, folks. You know how to go. <laughs> Good yeah, plan, too. That's it. Hey, I'm not a tease, but... Um, <laughs> you know, things like that. Oh, man. But I am. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Hey, that was Cass's word, not mine. After all, I hate my day in court. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, you guys have any stories behind City of Flies? Like, what inspired that? Oh yeah. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go, babe. <laughs> I was just gonna say so. Kind of like I was saying before, you know, with the LP being kind of a collection of the songs that we were working on over that year period, City of Flies was kind of the last song that we were working on and kind of had this whole new style to it and you know was kind of the direction that we wanted to go in and that's why we felt that you know it was necessary to have that as the first track on the on the song as well and make it be the single too it's kind of captured obviously you know we're a lot more where we were at than some shit that we wrote a few years ago Mm -hmm. i don't know like the and cassandra could probably get into this a little bit more than i can but yeah it's uh, basically you know it's a song about a hallucination and you know obviously takes a lot from um lord of the flies you know we kind of borrow from that a little bit but it's, well it was it's, it's a combination of because we we actually tried salvia because we couldn't find any weed this was a while a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> and this so, is, yeah this is in arizona well, before it was you know, legal for medicinal purposes or whatever at the time, so it's a lot harder to find. Hey, yeah. no judging here. 
So anyways, we knew nothing about it really and basically like, you know, took a big rip. And, and we didn't just take a little we didn't just take a little hit either. Like Yeah, it was we a rip. Loaded it into a like a three foot bong and like took a huge <laughs> ass. Like whole lit the whole bowl up. And rip. Oh my god. Like pa- so, yeah, oh, we- salvia too. It wasn't even like weak salvia, it was like Oh yeah, like, there's like level. One? I was like, oh, this one should be good, and it was like the second from the highest one on the range that they had. I don't even remember what it was called, but it was like red color, extreme <laughs> range. <laughs> the red <laughs> death. <laughs> so, anyways, we both had these like trippy ass experiences, and so we took some of that and put it into the lyrics of the song, and then when when we made the video for it. We took other parts of it, but a lot, actually, I guess all of it is in the song, right, babe? I mean, yeah, and just kind of like, swing. like overlaying that like experience on top of just like the world that we live in today, and we're just like everybody's like a chicken with his head cut off, you know, just running around, like yes. you know, Lord of the Flies type of shit. So. Yes, and using the most, wow, taking a trip and using the most evil book in existence, well, one of them anyway, uh, <laughs> as, a, as a basis. Now, that is beautiful. I mean, after all, they did kill the little fat kid by throwing a boulder on him, right? So, you know, <laughs> and then the one kid had the hallucination with the pig on a stick talking to him. So, yeah, there were no innocents in this book. <laughs> yeah, that's life. Yeah. God, I still remember that scene to this day. He was the only one making sense. It's, you know, so it's kind of like um, y'all ever see Deep Blue Sea back in the day when that shark ate uh, Samuel Jackson? <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> I just remember when I saw Lord of the Flies for the first time. I was like way too young to probably have been white able to watch it. You know, mm-hmm. so it's just like, oh, what the fuck is this? Like, this is like some fucked up shit that I'm saying. But then I saw it, you know, obviously later and read the book, and then it like, made a lot more sense. But yeah, it can be like very dramatic, like just the imagery of it and just the fucked up shit that goes on. Yeah, and I mean, the question is, was it fucked up before or after the conch shell broke? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I think that was the that was the nail in the coffin. You know what I mean? Those. Was... Oh yeah. Of course, you know. Um, to be honest, them kids were kind of stupid though. Remember they killed that yeah. pig in there, and the the pig was pregnant and stuff. It's like, no, nah, you should have let the food grow. What we do? Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man. Savagery. Yeah. So like, can't we have some middle ground here? Like, since, since some of those kids have been like, "Nah, dude, we don't want to like do this like clean all day, and we don't want to like go fucking crazy set total savages either." Like, we just want to like you know have uh, a, a middle ground somewhere. Not not to push it on the kids, but you know, had it been done in a different kind of way, if there was some cannabis there, maybe then things be a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we got this funny looking the plane. Here. They're like, dude, go away. Fucking, you're fucking this shit up, dude. Like, we found paradise out here. Like, yeah. <laughs> Did you know that was based on a true story? It was? Yes. I saw that. It the, the guy, one of the guys that lived, he, yeah, I don't know his name, but yes, look it up, Google it. <laughs> it was based on a true story. Damn. And one of the, like, the boat people. That he was he was working on the boat when he survived. They found them, and there was a link between Hollywood and the guy that helped him out. And so that's how it came to be. Well, now, how do you like that? <laughs> but I guess it wasn't as dramatic as in the movie. <laughs> then again, it probably far worse. You know, yeah, he probably yeah. he probably ate them. Ki- I'm just messing. <laughs> this goes to show like the power of art you know and how it just trickles through our society and we're getting a little bit thrown back at you now yeah from now. well it's like what i said at the end of um you know jamiversary and i was like we're here to shape a culture pretty much definitely now i'm not implying that you should eat people but <laughs> them ribs weren't gonna take care of us uh, you know what let's go on ahead and move to the next subject <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the, I'm on the strict no no eating people like, <laughs> like <laughs> well you know yeah that's like, that's I'm true good. like we'll like well there's always there's got to be a way we'll find a way we don't got to suck each other 
I mean, we can't necessarily eat that vulture either because he was looking at it just like I was looking at it. Oh, man. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not promoting that kind of stuff. I'm just saying, you know, it was a very evil book and a very evil time. We were all young then, and, um, yeah, we're mature now. <laughs> <laughs> I just say it was like part of like growing up in the nineties, you know, it was like you read that book or like watched a movie and it like traumatized you in some way. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, it's funny because like that would traumatize you, but that same scenario was also in Peter Pan with him and the Lost Boys. How the hell did they eat? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, speaking of which, though, your next song coming up is called "Sinking So Fast." So, what's the story behind that one? that we were after we did the city of flies we really wanted to like commit to doing more emotional music and so that song was written from feeling sad (laughs) really i mean that was the the basis of the song and it turned into that Mm. with our own dark spin on it i mean like you know sinking so fast yeah almost like come undone by duran duran right yeah it's yeah just basically feeling you know, like you fucked up or something somehow. I guess you could take it however you want, but like just regretting it or being stuck in that feeling and just feeling like you're sinking, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you can't get the shit out of your, you know, shit that you said out, out of your head that yeah. keeps you playing in your mind. Mm. I mean, you know, life, life does do that to you sometimes. I mean, yeah, so it, it definitely was like a we were like we want to write more emotional music and it was a directly emotional lyrically you know song so but it turned out to be like the whole point of like making that emotional music too is like i know like me and cassandra have talked about this like when especially like when we're feeling depressed or whatever like you want to listen to like some fucking depressing music or like watch fuck that movie or something Mm -hmm. like that because it like makes you feel better you know what i mean i think that's like what we're trying to do with our music too like it makes me feel better like like, i'm expressing that but i'm also like probably the biggest fan of like our music too you know like when i'm feeling like like, listening to that shit Mm -hmm. yeah puts a little smile on my face (laughs) i mean it it does it does lessen the blow you know (laughs) it's kind of like when you know sometimes yours truly is like man life's fucked up i'm gonna go ahead and watch tom and jerry there we go. There go. <laughs> Nobody yeah, knows pain it, like Tom. Yeah, it is out for sure. Like I just remember, like growing up, like being like eighteen, nineteen, like being at a party or something, and then being all hung over the next day, and, like dri- just driving around with, like one of my friends or something, like listening to like Dashboard Confessional or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like just feeling like fucking all depressed and shit. And, yeah. you know, just listening to that, but then I'd be like, you know, start feeling better a little bit a lot later. Yeah. I mean, after a while, you realize that the first party you went to, it wasn't all that lit. The DJ sucked, and the music was all loud. There was more feedback than song. And not only that, man, the beer was non-alcoholic. Fuck this house. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And you know, you're hearing that from me, and I don't even drink. Now look, here's the (laughs) And for me, it was like trying to, you know, put together what the hell happened. It was like a mystery. It was like, okay, what happened last night? Like, fucking. All right, so with you, so some of the stuff says this, and then, like, you start having flashbacks and shit, you know what I mean? It's mm. like... <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, I think about the first party I went to. No, I don't, man. That was shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, hey. So, just so we'll go ahead and let the audience hear this one because this was a pretty good song. I mean, you know, even though it does hit that note, but you know, we all go through it and lots of people are rebuilding their lives now and we're all facing that uncertain future. So it does hit the right notes. So your next song of the night is called Sinking So Fast by Resin Sun. Take it away. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Cross and Common Threads are helping schools across the country learn about healthier food preparation. And here in L.A., they're joined by the Sparks and will provide education, recipes, and knowledge to students and families about healthier options. Learn more at anthem.com slash CA slash Sparks. Anthem Blue Cross is the trade name of Blue Cross of California. It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MED-PROJECT or visit medproject.org. All right, that was Sinking So Fast by Resin Sun. Another classic hit. You guys are killing it tonight. I love this episode. And I really do, by the way. Me too. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's why I love the Hangout Show. It really, really brings the room together. Having all these good people come in, yep, and showing me that this community is a lot bigger and more enriching than I thought. I mean, think about it. Yeah, I like great that people. about it. I met you guys, I met Threadmill, I met Star Madman, and Space Force, of course, and yeah, quite a lot of people. And like Wash Dink from the last episode before you guys, and then Ether Drive. whenever I get him on this show. It's a lot of cool stuff. And then, well, let us not forget Brother Toaf. We still world champs, you know. Oh, for sure. Oh, boy. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, he's yeah, the so, man. Yep, much love yeah, for you, brother. Yeah. And you know something though? about that wrestling? Wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling. Wrestling. Life. Life. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, you know. life. <laughs> you know something? Yeah, as we go into you guys' next song called Glow. Was that about was that about the happy tales or going Super Saiyan and stuff? Because I know that there was a time I, you know, didn't interpret a song the way it was intended. Because it was called uh, Red Sugars, and I thought about women instead of weed. <laughs> so it was like you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering what 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 does Glow best represent? Um, uh, <laughs> I'll let you go with that. Yeah, I mean that touches on. This scene that's like when you're getting to know somebody, and then you like, and if you're into something, but like you never knew that they were into it, and but like that moment that you find out that you're both into something, you know what I mean? And it's talked about in the song, like seeing someone in a, you know in a different glow, and like you see, just see, kind of see them in a different light after that. You're like, oh shit! Like you're fucking like, got a little bit more to you than I originally thought. Oh, it's kind of about okay. that. Yeah, that's kind of. In a nutshell. Hey, that's magical right there, man. Ain't nothing wrong with it, especially if you're hitting it right. Nothing but respect for that good old glow there. Yeah. And there's some parts like uh, the fucking uh, talking about the river and all that stuff, and that's like referencing like reincarnation. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't remember where I heard it, but it's like someone was talking about every time, like, people that believe in like reincarnation, like, this, you know, whatever it is, like, you drink from this river that, like, you forget everything. Mm-hmm. And you get reincarnated, so it's like basically like your souls are talking, like saying like, oh, "Let's go to the river and drink, so that we can be, you know, in love together." And then, like once you're in love, you start seeing other these other parts of somebody. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a very sexy Come on, dude, change. You know, you know all about love and all this yes. shit. You know, souls and yes, fucking. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. I'm just throwing in as much innuendo as possible. <laughs> like like the real sexy changes and all, and the waves and the rushing, and not only that, but uh, intimacy and all sorts of other things. Oh, hell yeah, man. That's what it's all about. It's like, that's, that's like what we're going for, is like fucking bring back substance, like bringing back, like, you know, I don't know, just being okay to have feelings and fucking express them and yeah not being yeah. afraid to you know shoot man i mean what's I'm on your mind yeah i've been trying to work at that play field for a long time i'm just messing <laughs> yeah i know what that's all about <laughs> believe you me i am with you on that <laughs> nothing nothing to hate with there and not only that i love resin sun music so yeah definitely with glow being the- hey wait a minute this is the third one right Hey, I don't get to introduce this one. Guess who does? You guys do. Come on ahead and bring it in. Come on. <laughs> this is uh, Red <laughs> and Sun and our song Glow. Glow. Glow, baby. <laughs> That's right. And we about to light it up.
And that was Glow from Resin Sun. Excellent track, my people. Excellent track. By the way, I, I know I mentioned this on the show before, but I do have to go ahead and commend you guys for doing that unplugged video. That was well done. Putting it out there. Yes. And you know something? Like, right right then and there, like, when you guys did that, and I was like, it's still Jamiversary. Hey, 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 hey. Come right <laughs> here, right now. <laughs> We're going to do this as a unit. I'll push you guys every step of the way. Matter of fact, that's my promise to you. I'm doing it. That's it. I am here for this. We're going to make this happen. Uh, yeah. I even I even told Jay, like, hey, you should probably just watch this because I'm going to delete it. <laughs> he was yeah, like, that, that was the plan. Like, we weren't even planning on, like, saving it at all. Like, it was just going to hit. And it was just going to be whoever saw it live, got saw it live. And that was going to be it. But then we, like, really liked it after we, we did it. And we are like, fuck, let's just leave it up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also was like, um, very, very cool. You're like, you please guys not don't. deleting it. I said, don't do it. Don't delete it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shoot. <laughs> I mean, I had, I was there and I had my lunch and I was watching. And I was like, yes, yes, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, shoot. I appreciate that. Of course. I mean, yeah, hopefully with a new it. space, we can have more freaking of those moments and more videos and. Whether we do yeah. or don't show our, ourselves in them or not, or our faces or whatever, who knows? But. Hey, that kind of work right there, man, it keeps me on my toes. And I mean, I can only imagine that's you guys doing music. I can only imagine how you guys go about your art process. I mean, we got time in the show if you want to talk about it. Ooh. Um, well, my art process is really just, I've always liked painting and drawing and all that stuff, but I never really knew how to do digital art. And I just taught myself how to do it, like, with YouTube videos and stuff like tutorials, stuff like that. And then I liked drawing girls and, like, their style and stuff like that and decided I wanted them to be green. So that became an aesthetic for a really long time with my artwork. And then I just felt kind of burnt out and I don't want to feel stuck like I have to do the same thing because everybody's like, oh you have this aesthetic, you're so lucky you figured it out, but I don't want to, like, just be stuck on that one thing. And so I, I really like the darker colors and also just the whole 90s vibe, and so I've been really feeling that lately. And also the whole everybody knows how much I, we love Twin Peaks. It's a big inspiration in everything, especially mm. in the artwork. So anything that's, like, dark and weird and eerie and stuff like that i definitely want to like include in the art <laughs> so that's where i'm at right now and i'm really enjoying it and i like being able to just freely do whatever you know i'm enjoying making at that time and not feeling like i have to do something that people know what it is nice that makes sense <laughs> oh of course it does it came from you <laughs> <laughs> Especially like what you guys did with your with your website and all, like the revamping and all, like it's just nice. Like the blue lady alone, I was like, yes, yes, right yes. there. It's important to put that out there. Our website, we when we decided to redo it, we did it like in a day, and we had so much more experience this time than when we put it together the first time. So it does look way better, but it's so cool on a desktop. Like, you don't get the full experience when you're just looking on your phone. But right. it still is, is really cool. So, I'm, <laughs> we're proud of it. <laughs> oh, and as you should be, because I was looking at that, I was like, yep, totally. And that's I kind understand. of like a throwback to the to the old, like, band websites. Especially, like, when I was growing up, like, looking at web bands like KMFDM, like their website, and you'd just go to like a band site and they'd have like their discography on there. You'd be able to see pictures or videos and or like get some information on the band, you know what I mean? It was like the the band's like ultimate expression before like social media freaking totally took over all of the internet. And so it's kind of like a throwback to that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you guys have pretty much um, captured the whole aesthetic about, like, you know, like, great bands and stuff. And not to mention, like, um, the the mixture of the art and everything. It's just, like, you, you guys have got that style. 
And like, it's just amazing to see how you guys grow and you are growing each and every single time. And I'm like, I love it. Like, especially like when my stuff, see, like whenever I get something for jams, I have like a grid. I have a grid that plays when I'm doing jams, but I also have a grid when I get stuff for jams. And when you guys light up and then I see it, I'm like, oh shit, it's good. It's good. Right here. Let's see it. (laughs) And then I take my time and I listen to it and I put it on my personal playlist, which it's damn fine, <laughs> but yeah, and I was like, yeah, this this is definitely going on this episode right then and there, so yeah, I was like, Fuck yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah, like, I, I'm definitely a fan. I've been um, really lucky to get to do uh, cover art with a bunch of musicians that I've met through mm-hmm. this platform, and it's been so fun being able to do that and just take people's requests and make something really cool and they actually really like it, which that makes me super happy. But just collaborating with artwork with you or with a musician or another artist or whatever, like that's been really fun doing that too. Oh, most definitely. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are making plans and hanging out and all that kind of stuff. That's how it needs to be. I'm like, yes. Because I always wanted to lead a community like that. Yeah. It's just a gr- group of people that have all these different talents and can work together to inspire each other. Mm-hmm. The right tribe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we need to have a mural or something. God, I was supposed to have that. You know what? See, let me take a look at my list. Yep, 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 I do. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Add that to your list. Get your mural. Yeah. Your hey, some things that, you know, like like I said, I took notes on what we did for the first jam anniversary, and I got plenty of notes for the second one. So it's all about <laughs> riding through the smooth trains here. Hell, I probably even have some ideas for the third. Now, that's going to be wicked. Nice. <laughs> you know? Come on, <laughs> yup. It's all about leveling up. And uh, as you guys are, your latest one was called Fade Into You, right? Yes, sir. All right, all right. And, and Mazzy Star, like, uh, wow. You know, you could actually match her. <laughs> oh. Oh, <Thank> shit. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, it was damn good. She's, um, like, her voice is just so freaking beautiful. And when when you watch her it's so it's just such a simple melody and it draws you in like you just want to listen to the music you just have to like close your eyes and listen to the song mm-hmm. and that's what i really liked about it so i wasn't not trying to i don't know i just i guess i connected with that song because usually with a cover you're like oh hell no i'm going to stay far from that because nothing is ever ever going to be as good as the original song but we had some ideas of making it like just more of a darker sounding song because it's kind of a lot of people remember it as being like a love song, mm. but it has a lot of darker qualities about it in the lyrics. And so we were like, that'd be really cool if we could put our take on that and bring out some of the darker sounds. Yeah, yeah. Almost like Nightcore, right? Yeah, it's it's definitely um a, I've, a couple of people have described it as being melancholic which i think is a good description of it too and i think that my voice kind of naturally has that sound to it so it was just like a good pair all right all right that sounds yeah <laughs> well, in that case let's give everybody a pretty good taste of this again because i remember it being on one of the last uh jams episodes we did which was 27 and if they haven't heard 27 Listen to 27 sometime. <laughs> Gotta go ahead and put that in there. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is the last song from Resin Sun from the Evening. This is called Fade Into You, a Mazzy Star cover. Take it away, Cass. And Will.
It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MEDPROJECT or visit medproject.org. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And that was an excellent cover by Resin Sun. You know something? I always wonder, like, the, um... How it really goes down with cover songs sometimes because you know people will either love it or hate it or they find some way to complain about it but i'll allow it on this show and you know not only that i remember when i was trying to play a song that i liked and enjoyed you know 
I mean, at the end of the day, if they want some prep H so bad, I'll buy them some. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know? It's like, damn. <laughs> Let people express themselves. I mean, so I'm out in the back playing Little Red Corvette on the harmonica. I ain't killing anybody. He's already dead. <laughs> Look, uh, that's awful. That's an awful thing to say. But the truth is, you know. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like make most of your money off of live shows and merchandise and shit like that, not the actual music itself. So yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally swiped the song from him. But then again, didn't Elvis make a mint doing it? I'm just messing. <laughs> yeah, it's like all these people are getting into all these debates about, like all these court cases about. Yeah, you can kind of hear it here, there, and like all these scientists, like we, everybody rips everybody shit off. Like it's called being influenced and inspired, and you know, there's like the difference between imitation and you know emulation, and I don't know. It's just like it's a lot the a blurrier line than I think people give it credit to. Yeah, and speaking of that, Blurred Lines was a damn good song. Almost sounded like Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man speaking of which they, they, i wonder if they got all that money from that anyway it's you know i can make a whole episode about that and if i ever do i'll be sure to invite you guys in on that <laughs> yeah it's an interesting topic i mean i'm learning more about it and it's just a dark road to go down basically. yeah but hey, like, like, kind of like what me and um, Sheridan were talking about the other day. Art takes courage, you know? Yeah. Or just so. reading about this article the other day about Justin Bieber's getting sued by some band called Justice because his new album was called Justice and he, the T in it looks like a cross and that's how their T looks. I'm like, give me a fucking break. Like, that's such a common idea. Like, mm, yeah. Yeah. He- People have been making T's look like crosses forever, and like the word that it's injustice. I mean, like, come on, give me a break. Like, See, yeah, maybe we're... he saw that like in a record store somewhere, and like got stuck in like his consciousness or something. But I'm sure that wasn't like I'm gonna fucking consciously rip off this. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. I don't think there's any intent there. It's it's just fucking bullshit. Yeah, I well, think. you know. One way or another, it'll get settled out of court, probably. I mean, yeah, like, exactly. They're gonna get paid. Get paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fucking slimy. I mean, justice, huh? I mean, like, so what? What does that mean for like if you use a lowercase letter? Then <laughs> you know what I mean, like. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you make money, people are going to be coming after you. I guess. So. Yeah. Well, that's okay. We'll just put the asterisk right there in the middle. There you go. Just twice. <laughs> you know what I mean, like that. Yeah. <laughs> There's like way no way to insulate you from that. It's just like. People be coming out of the woodwork with all kinds of shit. Like, oh, I did my E like that, or you know, my song started like this, and your song mm. did too. And, and then you have to like waste all this energy on you know just responding to that, and just like give me a break. Like this is killing like music and art now. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, once again more of that unnecessary, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, when I uh, dealt with this butthurt um, content creator who said, oh, I'm not getting views I want, so I'm leaving podcasting. And I started jams like, you know, two and three. And it's like, if you're leaving the game, you're leaving the game. You ain't hurting nobody. You know, <laughs> you see, once you're out, you're out. But then he's like, yeah, he's yeah. like, I, I need to say that J360 Productions uh, jams uh, uh, ripped <laughs> off of Wonder Sounds. I looked at it, I was like, yeah, shut your pussy ass up. Ain't nobody <laughs> rip off of you. I said, in order for yeah. me to rip off of you, I gotta engage your content, which I never sub to. Jerk. <laughs> of course, yeah. uh, of course, our show got more popular by then. But it was like, geez. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't get into that whole like trying to figure out oh somebody's shit sounds like mine. It's like. My whole, I mean, Cassandra have talked about this extensively. It's like, if someone wants to rip us off, like, you know, we're, we're kind of like in the flat, you know, think that's flattery kind of camp, but it's like, no one can do what we do, like, in a sustained exactly. way, as long as we do. Like, we're going to keep having new ideas, keep having new songs, you know, keep doing, you know, dark, high energy, emotional music. It's like, there's not, nothing's going to stop that. Right. 
I mean, and then the thing is, a lot of those people who rip off, right, they get caught in the end. Whereas, like, we're at 27 episodes, about to hit 30. Homeboy is over there struggling with his one to two, I guess. <laughs> you know, things like that. It's yeah, the wildest... thing is not sustainable at all. Yeah, it's the wildest shit. Same thing for like, have so- time. like I, ba- I we barely have enough time to work on music in our life. You know, we literally get pulled in a million different directions every day. It's like I don't have the time to be going out there and doing it. Yeah. Like, I, there's better places to spend your energy, I would think. But oh, always. Always. Not. Like and I've said this before on like the J Man show, it's like if you are starting to find that that this is out of your hand and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you either need to take a break or do what you do when you said you were leaving the game. Because when you leave the game, that's all you knew. I'm not telling you to quit. I'm just saying. Paranoia is just ugly. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> I mean, you start worrying about that kind of stuff, man. I mean, like, it, it's something to look at, though. It's like going to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> if you look for it you could find it anywhere you know like it's kind of mm-hmm. subjective yeah I mean it's kind of like when I uh, went on sabbatical I mean like and somebody was like oh, did did you retire did you quit I was like huh who who are what what is this language you speak sir I'm on a little sabbatical I'm coming back <laughs> well I told you even I got worried for a second because I was like I haven't seen anything from Jay and then I actually had to go back and look and then I was like, Oh yeah, that's right. He's on his sabbatical. But at first it did, it, I did have some little questions in my mind. If you, if Jay was okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm like, I should have just popped this. Uh, yeah. I'm still okay guys. As far as I know, I'm in good health. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. I should have did that where I was sitting there and, and, and on my recliner wearing my robe and then like had my uh, drinking hand and been like, yeah, you see, this is what happens when you don't have any shows to do for a little while. But I will be back <laughs> and I won't be looking as dignified as this. I'll be ready to go then. And of course, I have a different beanie on instead of my Flyers one. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, That's the yeah. other thing, too. It's like you expect people to do all these posts every day. And then when you don't see it, you're like, what's wrong? Immediately, you're like, what's going on? What's wrong? Yeah. I try to promote just not worrying so much about that, you know? Yeah. But for you, you have you juggle so many different things. You have a lot of content that you have to keep up on. But for like for us, for my page, for just for Res and Sun, I'm totally give give myself a break on that sometimes because i'm just like i need time away from this <laughs> yeah I mean, clear my mind because i mean once you get like really really in you know because let's just say this jammiversary was huge man <laughs> i didn't expect it to blow up like it did but it did you know and i was like after all this i'm, I'm gonna take a break <laughs> yeah i bet that was a lot mm-hmm. and then come on back in here and do it all over again Cause even there are fans of <laughs> yo, cause even there are fans of the power play now that want like a uh, little event. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something for that, and yeah, it's gonna be pretty nice. Like yeah, mm-hmm. as long as it makes you happy, then that's all that matters. And it sounds like it makes you pretty damn happy. So oh, totally. Like I love putting on content and you know show for you guys and stuff. Like yeah, this has been awesome. Like I, I didn't expect the ride to be like you know this this grandiose and this big, but I love it. You know, <laughs> I <can't. laughs> we all we all love it. We're yeah. all very we're all thankful too. I know that we are, and a lot of people say it in the jam fam too. How thankful we are for you, and oh, just thanks. like bringing everybody together and. Even doing this for us and having us on here is really cool. Oh, definitely. Like, as soon as I was bringing back the Hangouts format and I reformatted it, I was like, yeah, you guys are coming in. Yeah, yeah, everybody's coming in. Let's do this. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, it was always a blast interviewing you guys and everything. And, of course, you know you're also welcome back. And when we start doing the open mics, you you don't even have to ask me. You just let me know when you want to go ahead and do the stuff, you know. (laughs) <laughs> be like, Jay, we want to perform. I'd be like, go to it. Yes, that sounds great. 
Well, since we're on the last leg of the race, guys, like I said, this was a blast having y'all here tonight. Like, you know, four great tracks and lots of uh, good conversation. Let's go on ahead and let the people know where they can find your art and everything. Go ahead and slide those links. <laughs> our main page is just resinsun.com, and from there you can view our videos, our art, our merch, our music. Everything is on that homepage. Awesome, awesome. Anything new coming from you guys anytime soon? Like, you know, a new EP, anything? We are in making an EP as we speak, so it's to be determined on the date. But Fade Into You and Seeking So Fast are both going to be on this to come EP. Wow, wow. Cannot wait. <laughs> oh, man. And as soon as it does, that thing is going up on the album of the week spot. I got a spot just nice. waiting for y'all. Yup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you. And, of course. And then, like, let's see. That album spotlight thing that I'm supposed to be doing for the website. Yes, 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 yes. You guys are due for that, too. Yep, we're going to have some fun with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big stuff is that coming. That sounds awesome. You know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, like I say, you can't go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. So, <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, like when we get back into doing jam time, I think I know who's actually going to be on that. Either that twenty eight or that twenty nine list, and I'm already giving it away, but I don't care. I own the network. Shout outs to you, Cash. Shout outs to you, Will. Great stories tonight and everything, and we will pick back up on another show sometime in the future. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Awesome, Thank you so awesome. much. And uh, J360 Legion, y'all take care of yourselves. Please don't eat the paint. We will catch you all next time on J360 Hangouts. This is J-Man signing off along with Resin Sun. Peace. Later. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.